Whiskey Cast. Brought to you by Redbreast. The definitive single pot still Irish whiskey. Those in the know, know Redbreast. Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Cast HD. I'm Mark Gillespie, and this time around, I'm in the heart of Speyside on the Ballandalic Estate. The McPherson Grant family was instrumental in founding Craig and Moore Distillery just up the road generations ago. Now, the family is back in the whiskey business with their own distillery. The McPherson Grant family has owned these lands since 1546. The farm building that's now home to the distillery isn't quite that old. It was built in 1830, but looked its age before the family decided enough was enough. Five years ago, um, facing a main road um, had become a disgrace um, because the roof was falling in. Um, there was, uh, 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 it was difficult to see exactly what else we could uh, do. The steading is right next to the estate's golf course. Golf and whiskey just seem to go together naturally in Scotland. So why not build a distillery? We are very lucky uh, that actually the uh, owner of the, uh, <coughs> of the nearby in Rothies, which can only be about 20 miles away, uh, the owner of the biggest uh, uh, copper and uh, all the pipe work that's needed actually plays on our golf course every Saturday. So the linkage was there and we were able to build on it. And you didn't have to wait as long as everybody else that wants stills from four sides now. Right? I think it's fair to say that we probably squeezed into a, a busy schedule that Richard Forsyth had on <laughs> at the time. That was five years ago. Now, Ballandalic Distillery is humming right along with a small staff of industry veterans running the place. Gentlemen. How are you? Here for the visit. Brian Robinson is the distillery's manager and host. He spent eight years at Glenfiddich and two years before that at the Glenlivet. Okay, see you in a moment. Big distilleries I've seen, I've worked in, and they have their own merits. But the opportunity to come and be part of a small family distillery such as this one was an opportunity I couldn't ever pass up. So for me, to be here now is very rewarding. And what I hope to do my long-term goal is to be stood in front of you in 25 years from now saying this, will, this is the Ballandala 25-year-old and that would be a real honor to be able to do that. Charlie Smith started his whiskey career 40 years ago at the old Pittyvake distillery. He thought managing Talisker would be the final step on his journey. And I retired from there in 2007 to relax, take it easy, and then this challenge came along as an opportunity which I couldn't turn down to use all these years of experience to, well, not realize my dream perhaps, but allow someone else to realize theirs. And it's been a fantastic project to be part of and still to be in the uh, settling down phase. And I'll continue to do that until the end of this year. And then hopefully go back into retirement, improve my golf handicap among other things. It's amazing what you can do with an old barn, given enough money and the desire to do things right. How many barrels are you filling a week? 15 barrel equivalents. So 15 barrels, 12 hogsheads or seven sherry butts, depending on what we're filling on any given day. So the SRWV Spirit Receiver Warehouse Vessel is currently about that full and we will do another filling run tomorrow and it's in here that the spirit gets pumped in about an average of 67 percent alcohol by volume and then before we fill into the cask charlie will come in take the dip calculate how much of our spring water we need to add to ensure that we get to the 63 and a half percent filling strength that we use so it's very practical very simple again we haven't over engineered a solution it's just a, a pump and a squeeze of a handle and you fill a cask up. Why reinvent the wheel if you don't have to? And from there, obviously we need somewhere to keep the casks once they're full. So please, come and have a look at Warehouse One. And this currently represents everything Ballandalic Distillery has ever made.
This room once housed young livestock, now it's home to young whiskey. It's starting now to permeate through. That wonderful angel share aroma is just starting to come into play. This was actually dedicated to Forsyth's when the distillery was under construction, so this was effectively their workshop. So it took a few weeks just for the smell of welding rods to disappear, but now it's starting to smell like a warehouse should. It's beautiful and cool in here. Even on the hottest day in summer, I can't imagine the temperature's gonna raise particularly much, so that's giving us the ideal conditions for maturation. So when you're tired of the heat and the noise in the distillery, you can just walk a few steps and you've got the beautiful silence and the cool of the warehouse. And I think if you look, we've still used wooden beams in here. We've used wooden posts. Everything we've done, we've done with as much tradition in mind as we could possibly muster. And that means waiting until the whiskey is ready before bottling it. No new make, no young spirit. It'll be at least eight to 10 years before a bottle of Ballandalic single malt hits the market. But when the land's been in the same family for 469 years, what's another decade or so? For more Cask Strength Conversation on whiskeys, with the people who make them and the people who drink them, join us each week for Whiskey Cast. On the Ballandalic Estate in Scotland, I'm Mark Gillespie.